Good morning, Water Creek, and welcome to this edition of Wake Up Morning. I'm Robert Brown. And I'm Claire Fuller, and we're here to help you start your day off right. Today is National Bobblehead Day. Today we celebrate all the spring-connected head-bobbing figures. For over 100 years, bobbleheads have been entertaining and fascinating fans and collectors. They can come in a variety of shapes and sizes, too. Bobbleheads commemorate iconic I teams, movies, and cartoon characters. Individually, they represent some of our most exciting athletes or thrilling television and movie characters. Early bobbleheads, known as bobbers or nodders, come from Germany. They took root in the United States pop, cu pop culture in the 1950s and 60s. Today, as toys and collectibles, bobbleheads continue to amuse and captivate us. Let's stand for the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Attention Spelling Bee winners. Our school spelling bee will take place Friday, January 14th. Please see your language arts teacher if you have not received a copy of the words to study. That's it for us, Water Creek. Stay tuned for a video about bobbleheads. Have a great day. So, quick question, what's the deal with baseball and bobbleheads anyways? Though today we associate them with giveaways and memorabilia, bobbleheads have actually been around for centuries. Since at least the 1760s, when nodding head dolls were a popular toy in China, as well as 1800s Germany, where they were then known as wobblers. 1960 is when the first sports bobbleheads were produced. That classic boy face design that so many people are familiar with, that sort of iconic look. To commemorate the 1960 World Series, the league decided to get in on the fun and commissioned figurines of Roberto Clemente, Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, and Roger Maris. But there was a slight problem. They were all made using the same mold, so they weren't distinct whatsoever. In fact, all old-timey bobbleheads had to be painted to become unique. And even though fans had to pay for them, rather than get them at the gate as a freebie like we do today, the figurines made their mark on history. Definitely a groundbreaking series. Uh, the first time that you know, actual players were turned into bobbleheads before it was all just generic or you know, mascots. Throughout the 1960s, bobbleheads enjoyed a heyday. They were funny, whimsical, small enough to sit on your mantle. Basically the MVP of ballpark souvenirs. The craze was just odd enough that it managed to spread to every other corner of pop culture, from other sports to other species. Even these four lads from Liverpool got the wobbly treatment in 1964. But then, something shiny and new started to turn the heads of young collectors. The Rugged Steel Carry All Action Playset by Mark. In the 1970s, the increasing popularity of cheap mass-produced action figures pretty much put a pin in the bobblehead craze. Clubs stopped making them, so young fans forgot about them. In fact, Wobblies might have been left in the dustbin of baseball history were it not for one club deciding to go retro for a special occasion. The Giants play their final game at Candlestick Park next. The thought was, you know, what promotions can we do that would really be an appropriate way to close down the ballpark? That house I grew up in, I still had a bobblehead there. It still is there, I think, now on one of the shelves. And I just thought, I wonder if we can bring a bobblehead back as a promotion. The marketing team knew they had to pick a player with a lot of historic meaning for the franchise. So once again, the Say Hey Kid was up at bat. Really amazing bobblehead. And uh, they're pretty cool. Yeah, they are. I do remember walking around the concourse that day, knowing that we had something special, because the fans reacted differently to it. There's something different when an item can bring out the personality of a player. Every single one has a different story as to why that pose was selected. I think that's kind of what makes this kind of interesting. The Willie Mays bobblehead 2.0 sparked a resurgence. Soon, Wobblies were back with a vengeance. By the next season, eight more clubs had spearheaded their own promotions after the Giants example. The frenzy for bobbleheads meant a boost in attendance. The phenomenon became known as the bobblehead bump. It was so popular that before we were even open, lines would go from Willie Mays Plaza down 3rd Street across the bridge. So fans wanted to get there early enough to make sure they got it. Bobbleheads started turning up everywhere, from cereal boxes to desks of certain beet farmers. Since 1999, there have been thousands of bobblehead nights celebrating every stripe of player. 
from rookies to bygone greats. And promo nights have become a huge deal. They're now a way to celebrate individual players, often at a critical point in their careers. Some fans have even ascribed a mystical power to a player's bobblehead night, and not for nothing. On his bobblehead night, Cody Bellinger broke the record for most RBIs before May 1st. On his bobblehead night. And the night he became a collectible, Kike Hernandez had the first walk-off hit of his career. Line drive center field, they do it again! People talk about bobblehead homers, but uh, I'll take the, the walk-off hit. Bobblehead guy? I know. We had him stay up and then it like just. Well, when, you stu when we stood for the pledge, like all the. <laughs> and then.